All right, so now I want to cover echo. What does echo do? That's pretty self-explanatory. It echoes whatever I uh, put into it. So I say hello world, it's going to echo hello world. I echo that. Let me CD over to Etsy. I echo this, and it's going to echo all the files and folders in this directory. Well, why didn't it echo this? Okay, it didn't echo this because the shell expands the wildcard and then echo is executed. Remember, this wildcard matches any uh, you know any character zero or more times. So it's going to expand that first and then echo it. Okay, if I want to suppress that, I could use this, which is an escape sequence, and say echo that. Now it actually echoes the uh, asterisk, right? So uh, I can, let's come over to um, here where I have these. I can echo every file that begins with a lowercase letter. There we go. <clears throat> every file that begins with the lowercase letter. Uh, I can echo my home directory. It uh, expands the tilde. Remember, the tilde represents your home directory. So if I'm Avant Garden and I type in echo that, it's going to echo my home directory. It expands the tilde. Okay. And uh, I can echo like that, Avant Garden. It expands that. Um, I can do arithmetic operations. Uh, echo, let's say, 10 mod. Mm, three plus two, and it's going to come back with three. Now remember, uh, PEMDAS, right? So ten mod three plus two comes back with three because ten mod three is one plus two is three. By the way, if you don't know what the modulo operator does, ten mod three it means what's the remainder when uh, ten is divided by three. The remainder is what? One? Yes. And, uh, you know, simple uh, arithmetic here. Um, put a put a parenthesis there, and it's going to come back with zero, because it's going to, you know, obviously do this first. Three plus two, and then it's going to say ten mod five. Five goes into uh, ten two times with a remainder of zero. So pretty, uh, pretty simple stuff there. Um, so that's arithmetic operations. Um, I can make a variable. I equals, say, the word funk, because I like funk music. And I can echo I, and that's, that's the variable I, uh, which contains the word funk. Um, I can uh, echo a command, the output of a command, present working directory, right? If I just echo PWD, it's going to echo PWD. If I put it like this, okay, it's going to echo out the actual output of the command, right? Um, other things I can do. I created a file in here. Now, brace expansion, okay, is something I want to show you. <clears throat> I've got a Let's say I create touch file one, right? And I can move file one to file two, right? And now I've got file two. Um, hmm, it's better with paths. So let me let me see. Uh, let's say I've got a file called. Uh, file one in temp. Okay, so now if I look at the temp directory, there's a file called file one, right? Now, if I do move slash temp slash file one to temp file two, I now have renamed file one to file two. I guess file two already existed, but no big deal. I just renamed file one to file two. Right? Well, there is an easier way to do that. Remove temp, 
little curly brace there. File 2, I want to rename it to file 3. So curly brace, file 2, comma, file 3. Okay, this is called brace expansion. Hit enter. Come over here, or do a ls to look at the uh, directory contents, and we see that it was renamed to file 3. What is happening there? Let's echo it out. It's not going to actually run the command, it's just going to display what the command will do. It's called brace expansion. It moves slash temp slash file 2 to slash temp slash file 3. Okay? So it expands these braces. Becomes that, and then, and then that. Uh, let me give you another example. Remember, we can cat more than one file at a time. Uh, we can cat, you know, multiple files at a time. Uh, you know, and it'll basically that will just display all the files to the screen, right? Well, I have created in here a file. It's called 10m.file and it's a 10 megabyte file. So I want to make a 50 megabyte file out of that. Okay? I could cat 10m file, 10m file, 10m file, 10m file, 10m file and cat it five times and redirect the output to 50m.file. Or, if I do echo cat 10m.file curly brace, one, two, three, four, five, five commas, that basically does cat 10m.file, 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 right? I could even do cat, and I mean it doesn't necessarily have to do this, dollar sign uh, parentheses, pwd, which stands for present working directory, slash, and that's going to cat slash root slash test slash the full directory 10m file, and it's going to do that five times. Okay, right? Now if I actually run that, okay, that command uh, without echoing it out, and I redirect the output of that to 50m.file, and I do an ls dash lrth, I see that this 50 megabyte file was created, oh, it's 60 megabytes. Oh yeah, because this counts as one, so I only need four commas in there. And now I got a 50 megabyte file, right? So that's brace expansion. Um, I can say copy slash uh, etsy slash password to password dot back. Echo that. If you're, always, if you're ever unsure that a command you're going to run in your, like, okay, this command could possibly do something bad, do something I don't want it to do, echo it out so you can, you can see, you know, okay, good. It's copying the Etsy password file to Etsy password.back. That's what I want it to do, right? Once you do that, you know that it's good, and you can do this, and I go ls-lrt Etsy password, and I can see, oh, pfft, sorry, slash Etsy, and I can see that I created this password dot back. So that is brace expansion, and tilde expansion we covered, right? And uh, path expansion, okay. And arithmetic, we covered that, and we covered command substitution, so echo find slash dash name password. Okay. Now, let's say I have a file on the system uh, vi slash root slash uh, unique file. Okay. And I say throw a bunch of text in here and I'm like, you know what? Uh, I can't remember where I put unique file, or I don't want to type the full path to it, whatever. I can even type in vi, uh, dollar sign parentheses, find, slash, so look on the uh, whole file system for unique underscore file, and it's actually going to open the file that it finds in vi, right? It's a nice way to do things, um, so, so I could do find, locates another command, it locates uh, uh, files, we'll go over the locate database later, but uh, 
it's a it's a quicker way there's a locate database so I can locate resolve.conf and it'll tell me you know everything that matches resolve.conf um, let me say locate uh, what what could be one that would be unique ntp.conf oh of course there's a man page on it uh, let's say sudo ldap.conf okay so sudo ldap.conf so I locate it there's only one file I can say vi locate sudo ldap.conf and I am now editing sudo ldap.conf in the Etsy directory <clears throat> so it's a, it's, a, it's a nice way to, to do that sorry about that my, uh, my son came in so, continuing on, I want to do some more brace expansion stuff. So, echo file one dot dot five, and it'll oh I did Fikey. It'll echo that out to the screen, and it expands it for one through five. Um, echo a zero dot dot four b a 0 B a 1 B a 2 B and so on so it expands that echo uh, 5 dot dot negative 5 and 5 4 3 2 1 0 negative 1 2 3 4 5 so that is brace expansion <clears throat> okay now I want to talk about the difference between no quotes single quotes and double quotes say I want to say echo I wish I had ten dollars in my wallet. Notice what happens. It says I wish I had <laughs> zero in my wallet. Why did it do that? Because dollar sign one without quotes says to the um, uh, the shell that this is a variable, right? Now what happens if I do it with double quotes? It still says it, right? What happens if I do it with single quotes? I wish I had $10 in my wallet. Let's say I set i equal to blah, and I echo i, it echoes out blah, I echo i, it echoes out blah, and I echo, echo single, single quote i, it echoes out that. So the thing about single quotes is it will e uh, echo literally what you're giving it. Okay, um, it suppresses everything. Double quotes suppress some things. Let's go over what double quotes suppress. Remember, single quotes suppress everything. If I echo tilde, it'll do tilde expansion, right? If I echo tilde with double quotes, it'll echo the tilde. So, double quotes uh, uh, suppresses tilde expansion. If I echo move slash temp slash file one to file two, it'll do brace expansion. If I do that with double quotes, it does not. So, double quotes suppresses brace expansion. Single quotes, remember, suppresses everything. So that's not going to do that either. If I echo, um, let me see, echo 2 plus 2, that's going to be 4. Echo it with double quotes, this is not suppressed, it's going to be 4. Echo it with single quotes, suppressed. Okay. Um, <clears throat> if I echo hello, and then I put a bunch of spaces in here, world, it's going to echo hello world. If I echo it like this, it's going to keep those spaces, right? Um, remember the cal command it shows us a calendar. Echo cal suppresses all the spaces echo it with uh, quotes, double quotes, or single, mm, single quotes is just going to echo out uh, cal. Double quotes 
it will not suppress the spaces. Or I shouldn't say suppress. It doesn't suppress the spaces. It's it's the way it splits it, right? So so it uh, uh, without quotes, it's going to get rid of um, multiple spaces and new lines. Okay. So on my system, I created a file with spaces, right? Remember that uh, this will keep the spaces if I double quote it. So if I type in move file with spaces dot text to file without spaces dot text, it thinks I'm trying to move multiple files, file with spaces dot text to a directory. And it says, well, I mean, you can't move multiple files to one single file, so this has to be a directory if there's multiple files, and saying, oh, it's not a directory. If I do the same thing, but I quote the file, now we've got file without spaces. Uh, another thing, if I do this, this is slash t, means tab, hi, slash n, how are you? How are you? Right? It's going to say, it's going to echo out exactly what I typed, right? If I do it without the quotes, it's going to get rid of the t, uh, the slash. And now it's going to give me the slash. But uh, I, I want to actually have that be a tab and a new line. So I can do dash E, echo dash E, tab, hi, new line, how are you? So, remember earlier we typed in a command called, uh, it was which, and we did which cat, and it said bin slash cat, right? Now, I've got a script, I've got a folder in my uh, home directory called my scripts, and in there I have a script that I like to run called script.sh. Now, if I try and run it, script.sh, it says, oh, command not found. I type in which script.sh, and it says no script, in, and then lists a bunch of directories, right? So to run this, uh, this command, I have to do slash root slash... Uh, my scripts script.sh and I run the script and it says wow this script does things right so let's say I don't want to have to type in the full path every single time we have on, on our systems um, environment variables okay environment variables control our variables that uh, control the um, environment <laughs> the the environment in which we're in and they also are used to configure um, applications sometimes uh, and when we're scripting they become very useful so if we type in print env right it'll print all of our environment variables right so the environment variable and there's a bunch of them here each one does its own little thing uh, the environment variable we are interested in is called path okay so let me clear the screen here if I echo path and I can do that with uh, no quotes or I can do it with double quotes or I can if I do it with single quotes as you know it's gonna suppress it but uh, so I, I echo the path and it says this is my path right and when I do a which it's gonna search in this path for um, the command I'm I'm entering script.sh right when I when I uh, type in script.sh it's going to search in this path and that's why because this root slash my scripts doesn't exist in that path I have to type in the full path every time I want to run my script okay so I don't want to have to do that so I type in to to modify an environment variable type in export path leave off the uh, the uh, what you call it, the dollar sign, and then say path. So what I'm saying is path equals the already existing path colon because this is colon delimited, and this directory root 
my scripts, right? So now, when I echo path, it's going to show at the end my, my root my scripts. And when I type in which script.sh, it's going to say it's right there in root my script scripts uh, script.sh. And when I type in script.sh now, it's going to actually run the script rather than saying uh, command not found. So these are environment variables. Um, they're very important. We can create our own environment variable. We'll say uh, export my var equals, um, uh, let's say path. We can use other environment variables here. And uh, home and um, let's grab another environment variable. We'll say lang and then ha 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 ha, right? Now uh, we echo my var, and we see that uh, first we have our path right here, and then we have our home, and then we have our uh, lang environment variable, our language, and then uh, ha 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 ha. So we will learn a lot more about environment variables later. But uh, they're very important. Um, I can say unset my var, and now when I echo it, it's empty. And I didn't cover this earlier, but I created an alias for grep, and I can say unalias uh, grep, and that deletes the alias as well. I just remembered that because I didn't cover that. Okay, <clears throat> so let's talk about uh, cursor movement. So I type in a long command. I type in a really long command. I'm like, ah, you know what? I got a typo at the end. Control A takes me to the beginning of the line. Now I am here, right? Control A moves me to the, or sorry, Control E moves me to the end of the line. Um, Alt, uh, let's say I'm over here. I hit Alt F. Ah, uh, Alt F is going to be interpreted by my terminal emulator here. Let me see if I can use the other Alt F. Nope, Alt F is out. And I imagine Alt B is out too. Yes, Alt B is out. Control L clears the screen. Um, it, uh, if I hit Control U, it'll delete what was. Um, from my cursor to the beginning of the line. If I hit uh, Control K, it'll delete from my cursor to the end of the line. And if I hit Control Y, it will paste whatever I deleted. So if I type a long command, and I'm like, ah, you know what? I don't want to enter that command. Hit Control U, it'll delete everything. Hit Control Y, it pastes it back in. Um, I type another long command. I come over here and I'm like going to change something and I'm like, ah, you know what? I don't need this part of the command. Hit control K, it deletes it. Control Y, it pastes it back. Okay? Um, tab completion. So if I type in slash RO and I hit tab, it's going to complete that. My tab, it'll complete that. Hit tab, tw oh. Yeah, hit tab again, since there's only one thing in there, we'll complete that. Um, ls slash Etsy, hit tab twice, and it'll ask me if I want to display the contents. So hitting tab twice will display the contents of a directory. How tab twice, there's other directories in here, and there's nothing in that directory. Hitting tab does nothing. So that's tab completion. Um, when I type commands, I get a history. It saves it to my history. So I type in history, and it shows me all the commands I've typed. And say I want to run um, this command again, right? 1078, exclamation mark, 1078. And boom, it runs that command from my history again. If I'm interested in something I typed earlier, um, Let's say, um, well, I'll just hit, hit Control-R, and I type in echo, 
and then hit Control R, Control R, Control R, Control R, Control R, Control R, and it'll search through my history and show everything that matches Echo. And keep hitting Control R, and it'll keep showing the things that match Echo. Once it starts uh, going bunk bunk, it means that um, y you know you've hit the end. Um, so I cat Etsy password right. Control L, clear the screen. I want to run that last command I just did over again, catting the Etsy password, exclamation, exclamation. Okay? So that'll run that. I want to run the last, these are, um, this is kind of a bad command. I want to run the last time I ran, I, I, um, uh, the last time I wrote something with echo, beginning with echo. I do that. Okay? It, the, the command had to begin with echo. If I, if I had uh, echo somewhere inside the command, like command, space echo, something like that, it wouldn't, uh, it wouldn't, um, and then I do echo. It's not going to do that because it has to begin with echo. If I want to do the, the last time I wrote a command with echo in it, okay, I do that, and now it'll run command echo. So, the last couple things I want to get into is just real simple. It's for and while, okay? So, I can say for i in, and if you remember brace expansion, 0 dot dot 10, right? Echo i, say do echo i, done. This creates a little for... Uh, for loop, so it says uh, i is equal to zero, i is equal to one, so on and so forth. So four i in that zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's going to echo that. When we get into scripting, you'll learn a lot more about this. I can say i equals zero while i is less than ten. Do echo i, and if you remember, we'll say i plus one, and done. Wah, 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 wah. Let me see if, uh, Ah, <laughs> I could do this with let very easily. Uh, gosh, I always get confused here. So i equals zero. Wait, i equals zero. I equals zero. Clear. So i equals zero. And then I can say, while i is less than 10, echo i, i++. Plus plus. And it's going to do that. All right, so that's the end of that video.